Welcome to the Snake Alley Crit. It is my favorite race. I like to dub it the coolest crit in the world. This is one of those races where getting a call up is a huge advantage and because I was the 2022 winner, I did get a call up for this race. Last year I finished fourth. Cade Bickmore, who I'm sitting behind right here at Project Echelon, was last year's winner. So we are off to a fast start. It's basically like a cyclocross start. I want to be in the top three, top five going into the snake. If you've never heard of this race or seen it, you're going to see why here in a second. Positioning is really important. Now it's a pretty fast downhill, ripping fast downhill. You can take these turns real wide. This one you can take real wide, but watch out, whoop, there's a curb right there with some hay. That one will sneak up on you. A little bit of a gap up to these two. I'm gonna close it. Cade's going to go to the front. We're going to hit the snake. This is why you want to be good positioning. It is, I think, nine switchbacks on a brick laid road, so it's pretty bumpy. You go into it too fast, and you just pop, 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 and then the next thing you know, you're on the ground because your, your tires are basically bouncing from one brick to the next. If you go a little too fast, that is bad news bears. So you pop out. This is actually right here is like the hardest part of the race because you want to recover but this little alleyway neighborhood street still keeps climbing gradually and right here is where time can be gained or time can be lost because you sit up um, above and beyond has a lot of riders they've got i think seven maybe eight riders in this race uh, so they're going to be sending a lot of attacks when you have that many riders i'm riding solo so it's just me, um, so I need to be really careful about how many matches I burn because if you add up all the matches I have in my matchbox versus all of the matchbook box, wait, hold on. If you add up all of the matches in my matchbox compared to all the matches in the entire Above and Beyond team's matchbox, it's not going to come close. So I got to be careful about how I spend them. But there was an Above and Beyond and Stephen Bassett of the road. Stephen Bassett, as you can see, reigning crit national champion as of last week. Uh, for the record, he's only won one crit, and that was that crit. I like, I like to remind him of that. Um, that was a controversial race. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go there. But uh, he is the crit national champion right there. Me and him go way back. We actually raced Snake Alley together on the same team as juniors which is pretty cool to think of um, back in the day. We've come a long way since then. He's on Project Echelon. Echelon's got four riders in this race. Obviously, Bassett is a strong rider, and Cade Bickmore is another one I'm going to be watching out. If either one of those two riders is in a break, it's a threat. And so I've got both of those guys marked pretty heavily. I'm going to keep my eye on them throughout the race. Cade slides past me on the downhill and I'm going to get past him again before we turn to go up the snake because I'm f afraid that Cade would have sat up, um, a Saturn sit up if you want to call it that, but you could call it the snake alley sit up where it's really hard to pass on the snake. And so if you've got your teammate right in front of you, you could just kind of easy pedal and let your teammate get a gap. 
So I was afraid that Cade might try to pull that on the snake with Stephen Bassett being right ahead of him. So I slid past him to get behind Steven to make sure that gap doesn't open. Now it's going to be a recurring theme that you're going to see me passing a lot of riders on this straightaway through downtown Burlington, Iowa, uh, because I, I I'm not necessarily attacking. I'm not I'm not really attacking at all. What I'm doing is getting into position before the snake. Like I said, crazy stuff happens on the snake. You're about to see something crazy happen. Whoa, bam! And Stephen Bassett's on the ground. Let's watch that again. Zippity doo da backwards. Here he comes. He's on the inside. He's going pretty fast. He's going to hit the inside, inside. He's just going to lose that front wheel. Like I said, you start, you, your front wheel starts to go, and the bumpiness of that road, it's hard to get traction, and the bricks are slick. Luckily, the guys in front of me avoid that crash. You see Stephen Bassett having to grab his bike and start running up the hill. Luckily, this hill is such a slow hill to ride that. He didn't lose that much time, actually. Um, I'll, I'll leave you on a cliffhanger if he's going to come back to us or not. But that's why I want to be in good position because I was sitting fourth wheel just now, and that's still not the safest place because somebody still crashed in front of me. Here I am talking to Eli House. I'm saying, yo, um, Stephen Bassett just crashed, and he might be one of the strongest riders in the race. Or are we just going to sit here and let him ride back up to us? Obviously, the Echelon guys are going to be sitting in, slowing down the group because they want their teammate to catch back up. And so being a, a one-man show, I don't necessarily want to spend a bunch of time on the front, but here I am on the front, kind of going hard. You can see me pop out of this turn a little hard um, because I didn't want Steven to catch back up. Call me mean. But I, I don't want to just wait for the strongest guy in the field to come back. He crashed. I think that was his mistake. He went into the rate. He went into that turn way too fast. And if you crash, that's a consequence of a crash is getting dropped. And so I'm saying, like, let's pick up the pace so that this guy doesn't come back. Because if he catches back up to us, there's a good chance that he's probably going to beat us. So I'm thinking, let's go. Again, you see me positioning. Um, I don't want to go into the snake outside of the top five. So you see me slide up into the top three here behind uh, two former teammates on the rain racing. Um, Chris Huberti's going to pop across. I'm a little nervous. He's going into it pretty hot as well. I'm like, man, did you just see what happened last lap? Um, but luckily, he keeps it upright, uh, and I'm going to... Slide past Tim here. He's going to try to do what I was just talking about, you know, where he's going to let the gap open between him and his teammate. So I slide past him because I don't want that gap to open. And I'm on Aaron BB's wheel. again making that pass guys are getting something to drink i'm like uh -uh, i can drink at the top of the hill right here i'm making moves because i don't want to be in the back hey positioning it's important for this race game begin
Right here you can see a rider is getting a gap like I said right at the top of the snake is when gaps happen you see Patrick Welch u23 TT national champion he's gonna pop across to that rider now we've got two riders off the front there's not an echelon rider represented in this two-man break and so Matt Zimmer from the echelon team is gonna spend a good chunk of time on the front chasing back this two-man duo uh, nobody has tried to pop a cross yet. Um, we're about to go into the snake, so I'm going to make the pass on Zimmer and go ahead and try to make the bridge up to Patrick Welch and this other rider who have a decent gap right now. You can't see them ahead of us, but we can see them when we were racing. I know that Patrick Welch is strong, so I'm thinking if I can get across to him, maybe we could roll this um i'm pretty sure another echelon rider is going to follow me uh, i'm pretty sure Cade and stephen bassett are well aware that this is one of my favorite races and i'm a previous winner um, so they're probably watching me very closely to make sure i don't get any kind of a gap game over game begin And I do make the catch. I'm on Patrick Welch's wheel. I come through, and who do you know is on my wheel? It's Cade Bickmore. So me and him, I say to him, hey, man, I'm willing to work if you want to work because I know you can beat me in a sprint, right? So you want to work with me, it's, it's a pretty good shot that if me, you go to the line, you can out-sprint me. Um, but he wasn't really interested in that. So it didn't work out. Groups all back together. Now you might be wondering, did I do anything different to my bike? And I did. I'm running a one by with a chain catcher. Um, so at moments like that, right when you crest Snake Alley, you have to go from little ring to big ring if you're running two by. So I was thinking if I could run one by, I would not have to let up on the pedals for those few seconds. And so I could, uh, I could just start shifting right away and attack. So I, I knew that and wanted to take advantage of that. Steven Bassett's just attacked. Cade's going to pull off because obviously he's not going to chase down his teammate. Um, but me and Cade have a bit of a gap over the field. We're going to bridge up to Ben Oliver and Steven Bassett. Um, I'd like to think that the, this four-man group was probably the four strongest riders in the race. Cade ends up winning three of the days. Ben Oliver ends up getting second three of the days and winning one of the days. Steven Bassett's the national champ. I've won two out of four of these races over this weekend's racing before. So I think the four of us had each other marked. I really wanted to roll that. Um, I'd much rather it be a group of four than a group of ten going into the finish. And Echelon had two riders in that break. And so uh, you can hear me yelling at them like, yo, Echelon, like, let's go. But they know that they can win a field sprint um, with Cade being one of the best sprinters in the country. And so they didn't want that break to go. Um, you can see Steven Bassett had to take the hotline right there. Uh, I told him right after that, like, man, I'm glad I got that on camera. Uh, he went way out and hit the curb and jumped off of it pretty sweet. Um, 
I don't know if he did that on purpose. Adrenaline, he's already crashed and caught back up. Um, I thought it was a little sketchy, but hey, it worked. I mean, it did set him up pretty well for the turn right after. Now, I don't know if this above and beyond rider just saw what Steven did last lap. So he saw, he thought, hey, I'm going to try it too. But he doesn't quite do it the right way. Uh, he ends up way off course. Uh, Steven just kind of like hit, hit the sidewalk and jumped right back on. That guy was long gone. I don't know if he was just like, I'm out. I'm going back to the car or what. Uh, another reason you don't want to be too far back in the group this is probably the lap where i was the furthest back i think i'm maybe eighth or ninth wheel back and right into the first turn guy in front of me is having chain issues so that above and beyond rider at the bottom i had to pass him because he was going from big ring to little ring and having shifting issues that happens like so often and so the less people in front of you the less risk there is of mishap Steven Bassett and an above and beyond guy are off the front. I'm going to pop across. I want to point out Cade, knowing that there was probably going to be an attack, is already looking over his shoulder and he sees that it's me and immediately he gets on my wheel. Um, this is what it means to have riders marked. He sees me and he immediately gets on my wheel and you can see he's going to pull through right here. Uh, obviously, he's not going to pull through that hard because, of, of course, his teammate's up the road. But again, we're in this scenario where there's an echelon rider there's actually two echelon riders and me and another rider and i'm like come on guys you've got two out of four but again they don't want they don't want to do that because uh they want it to be a field sprint uh, they're confident in their sprinting abilities i'm not so of, of course i want there to be a breakaway i want there to be the least amount of people at the finish possible we're coming close to the end of the race three laps to go so things are going to start to get hectic, hargy bargy. People are going to be pushing, shoving, uh, fighting for position up the snake. Steven Bassett kind of attacks a little bit, um, but he's immediately marked and then everybody's sitting up. And I really wish right here I had just sent it. I think that would have been a really, really good time for an attack. I think everybody was hurting. Um, and we were right at a point of the course where like people wouldn't have been expecting an attack. And I probably could have gotten a gap very quickly because on these long straightaway sections uh, on the back part of the course where we're not hitting the snake, um, people were just weren't really wanting to work together. And so the pace was like really high, really slow, really high, really slow and back. And so if I could have gotten a gap and just stayed steady on the gas and then hit these last two laps with a little bit of a gap, um, I know that that has worked in years past because that's how I won two years ago. So in hindsight, I wish I had been a little bit more aggressive um, because I know that if it comes down to a field sprint, I'm not gonna do well. I'm not a sprinter. I've been training for these kind of ultra endurance races, which definitely don't help with your sprint. And so, yeah, um, yep, I am, uh, I'm just kind of sitting in, following wheels at this point, um, but I wish that I had attacked for sure. I 
I do put in a little bit of a digger right here because whenever you crest out of the snake, that's the best time to really push the pace if you want to make people suffer uh, because it's going to be really strung out. So if I push the pace and I'm first wheel, the guys who are, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth wheel, they're going to have to work really hard to close the gaps that are happening in front of them. So that's why I kind of pushed it a little bit hard right there, but not a full on attack. Coming into one to go. I like where I'm sitting behind Above and Beyond. This is Ben Oliver. He's a good sprinter, so I know being behind him is probably uh, pretty good. But I, uh, overall, I'm a little too far back. I'm like sixth or seventh person back. Chris Uberti running the one by as well. No train chain dropper, I'm assuming, because he uh, just dropped his chain. So I don't think he had a chain guard or that wouldn't have happened. But if you drop your chain and you're running one by, you're kind of out of luck. Um, you can't really fix that while you're riding. So I pass a couple guys. I want to go into the snake behind Steve Bassett because I know he's strong and he might be trying to, he may try to attack. Um, I was thinking maybe he would attack out of the top of the snake. So I'm going to stay on his wheel. Uh, after the race, I was actually staying with the rain racing guys. And Tim Smith, the guy in orange that I had just passed, had, had said he wasn't exactly pleased with the pass I made him right before the snake. I don't think I did anything out of line there. We didn't touch. I just passed him because I wanted to stay on Steven Bassett's wheel. But as you'll see, it didn't really work out because nobody attacks and we are all, I think we all just had our minds set on this is gonna be a field sprint. So I'm sitting third wheel, which is probably a little too far forward. I would have liked to have been a few spots back and so um, I kind of have an idea in mind of what I'm going to do for the sprint here, and you'll see that. All right, if you remember Schwam again last year, Alexi Vermeul Vermeulen won from a long ways out. So I'm thinking I'm going to try to do that. And what Alexi did was he attacked into this little bit of a downhill because if you can hit the downhill at speed before everybody else, you're basically just going to hit your max speed before everybody else does. And if everybody's at the same max speed, then maybe you can hold it off. So that's what I did. There was a little bit of a dip into a road crossing. So I'm sprinting full out. Um, I do start to get past. And then right when I'm getting past by Steven, my chain actually catches the backside of my pedal somehow. And so uh, it got stuck. And you can see slow-mo here. I'm not pedaling for, I don't know, five, six seconds or something. Um, and so not being able to pedal for a few seconds, obviously hindered my ability to be able to sprint and so I don't think I would have won by any means um, but I think maybe a fourth or fifth place finish would have been there for me had my chain not caught I thought I did everything right I did do the one by but I had a chain guard on somehow that still messed me up which is a bummer I thought I was making a good call there I do end up switching it back to the two by for the following two races after this and didn't have any other chain issues after that. So maybe the one by was a little overthinking it, but oh well, you gotta, you gotta try what you can. I ended up eighth on the day. Not a great result, not what I was going there for, but overall, I just love this race. It's a ton of fun. All right, if you guys want some stats, uh, the race was 24.3 miles, 97 TSS for almost exactly an hour which means I was at a 0.99 intensity factor for the whole race which is awesome 370 watt normalized power only a 285 average so very sporadic uh, when we were pedaling we were pedaling really hard and when we weren't pedaling we were coasting so that's pretty much how this race goes max heart rate 195 max power 1151 that's all I got for this video so you want to support me you can check out all the links in the description you can share this with your friends subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one